Let's dive into cloud economics, and in particular, this term elasticity. Elasticity means that your company has some web servers, and if the traffic goes up, you can respond by automatically getting a new virtual machine or two or four, and, the, and you can respond to that traffic. Likewise, if the traffic goes down, you can put away those virtual machines and you can make them uh, you know, go into a, a resource where you don't have to physically buy it, physically purchase it. That's what this elasticity concept is, is you know, scaling up and down according to demand. And we know this uh, because this is the way a utility works. And a utility uh, is a great example of the concept of elasticity. If you need more air conditioning, uh, you can get more power from the power company. Likewise, if you don't, you can actually turn off your thermostat and not get that electricity. The same concept applies with cloud computing. This is probably one of the most fundamental concepts to master is to understand this concept of when more traffic comes in, you can scale up. When less traffic is there, you scale down. And this is the way to save tremendously on cost. And you could almost think of it as like an 80-20 rule where uh, you know, in a traditional data center, you know, 80% of the cost is because you have to purchase up front all this hardware. But in a cloud-based environment, you can actually be more like a 20% player because those peaks, you can scale up, but then you don't have to actually uh, reserve those instances uh, for when the traffic goes back down again. And most of the time, traffic to you know, a lot of technology sites are very cyclical. Another term that comes up with cloud economics is this idea of availability. So is your website available? What does this mean? Well, if I send a request in, do I get a healthy response back? Right? Does it say, you know, whatever it is I'm, I'm trying to give, it's a, a web service, uh, am I always going to get a response back? And and is this a you know 99.9999 reliable or is it uh, you know do I have problems with making my my services available? And this is something that you get is this idea of you know availability in that you're using services that are really designed to be scalable, and it's almost impossible to build something like that on your own if you're an independent company just because of the, the startup cost to purchase all that infrastructure. Another key concept in cloud economics is this idea of self-service. Can you actually get things without going through a lengthy process of you know, IT procurement and you know, the, the bureaucracy of you know, involving many people in a purchase? Or could you do things in a more self-service fashion? A good example of self-service is a vending machine. Right, if you wanted to get a drink of some water somewhere, or you wanted to get a, you know, some kind of a snack, you could go to a vending machine, pay, get it right on demand. It's a little bit more expensive, but it solves the problem of not needing humans. Really, and a lot of the cloud uh, technology is really designed to be like this. And this is probably a core feature: uh, is the self-service aspect of cloud computing, and it means that the individual users in your company are empowered really with their credit card to solve problems versus in the traditional way, there's a lengthy process to, to get just general business done. One aspect of cloud computing that isn't mentioned a lot, but it's really important is this idea of reduced complexity. What this means is that you're focused on solving the business problems and not focused on you know, deciding is there a security problem in your data center or, you know, is your network, uh, is it under attack by, you know, people outside uh, of your company? Uh, there's all these problems that a cloud vendor uh, is able to, to solve for you because they're specialized in, in solving those problems. So this is, a, I think, an often overlooked aspect of cloud computing is that it's simpler when you use the experts and you leverage the skills that you're, you're best at. And this is one of the comparative advantage um, examples of, of why you should use cloud computing. One of the most popular terms uh, in the 1980s, 1990s was this total cost of ownership phrase and it's still uh, a very popular term for a good reason. A lot of times it's easy to get caught up into you know, let's say the initial cost of something 
and instead not look at what the total cost is, right? So, uh, you know, with a physical data center, for example, you know, if, if someone was only looking at, you know, uh, f the, the example that they've already got a initial or fixed uh, investment, or you call this a sunk cost, into your own data center, uh, you might think, well, we already have all these people, we already have this you know, equipment, you know, why would we need to um, you know, use cloud computing? Well, a lot of times it's the long term that's important. So if you start looking at the, the long term horizon, you know, maybe initially there, there's not, a, there's not a, a gain, but eventually those costs uh, greatly diminish uh, because of the fact that over the lifetime, you don't have to pay the, the higher salaries, you don't have to pay for the fixed cost. And so it's the long term that you're looking at when you're looking at total cost of ownership. So what will happen to your company if you reduce the salary and reduce the, the fixed cost of maintaining this ecosystem? A lot of times the case is gonna be that your your company would save money because over the long term, these are you're switching from basically an upfront cost to a variable cost, which is something you can control and optimize. Operational resilience really responds to how can your company uh, perform when there's some kind of a crisis. Let's say that there's a physical data center that you own and there's a natural disaster and it goes offline. Well, if you put all your money to that one physical data center, then you're basically dead in the water. You can't solve the problem. But when you use a cloud provider or you, you know, are leveraging a company that has better resources than you do, you get this inherent operational resilience. So you have a global scale from day one. So if there is a scenario where, let's say this, this data center goes offline, uh, it doesn't matter because you've already designed your application to basically account for that. And you know that you can handle that, that uh, failure because you've got built-in operational resilience. So this is a, another really important aspect of the economics of cloud computing that's, that's less understood is that uh, it really is not possible to build out this kind of resilience unless you're at you know, an incredibly large scale in terms of a software company. Business agility is a lot like surfing. It's you're riding the wave, this incredibly powerful uh, force of nature that could crush you if you tried to go against it. But if you harness the ability uh, of the wave, that's how surfers are able to do these you know, 50, 100 foot waves is they're riding with the wave. They're not forcing the wave to do things. So business agility with the cloud is very similar. By leveraging the cloud native resources, that are constantly being developed, you can uh, focus on really the business core uh, strategy that your your company's focused on. If it's you know selling a, a retail good, or it's providing uh, machine learning applications, or it's uh, you know building mobile applications, uh, by not focusing on doing the things that cloud providers are already giving to you, you're riding that wave, and you're able to go and much quicker. And, and develop features at a much fa faster pace. Maybe weekly you can develop new features in your company because you're not wasting your time doing things that people are already doing for you in a much better way than your company could possibly do.